All right, hey now, it's the Rob from 1061. Rob, wait. What? This is post to post. We gotta do something big, something out there. What were you thinking? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Town Square Media and 1061 Kiss FM proudly bring to you your podcast champions of the world. He's the R to the O to the B. I'm S-T-E-V-E. We are your hosts with the most, bringing you everything wrestling related from post to post. Look at us, we are back. I think this is Steve. I can barely see it through all that sun. My yeah. goodness. I am the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM here with my tag team partner in podcasting. Hey guys, it's me, Steve, web contributor to 1061 Evansville.com. You look good. Thank you. How was, good. how was Myrtle Beach? Oh, wonderful. Glad to be home, but I had a great time. Yeah, we definitely want to thank Gavin for uh, stepping yes. up and filling in while Steve wasn't here. Steve is back, so we are at it. A big week. It's the go home week for Extreme Rules. Yeah. This was the last Raw last night before Extreme Rules. Um, it had kind of a small build-up, I feel like. It was only a three-week build, which is, I feel like, a little short for a pay-per-view yeah. um, in the modern era. But um, also, I feel like it was, I don't want to say it was a bad show last night, but it just it, it, it wasn't enough to really, really hook me for Sunday. Yeah. What do you think of the show? Um, I almost felt like it was out of, they did segments out of place. Well, you know, I want to get to that, particularly with the main event yes. segment. Uh, but what, let's get to that here in order because I've got a few notes. I've started taking some notes during Raw. Helps me kind of uh, focus on the yeah. show and organize my thoughts a bit. Um, I don't remember if they announced this last week or not, um, but they they were talking about the Intercontinental Title match at Extreme Rules, and it's a four the four the Fatal Four Way match. Yes. Oh my God, am I excited for that match? That should be awesome. Yeah. Uh, that being said, um, there was an Intercontinental Championship, or the, the uh, it wasn't a title match last night, but uh, what was it? Sami Zayn and Cesaro were going to face off one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it started uh, off that way. Wound up being a tag match. I'll say I was m a little more excited for the one-on-one -on -one contest yeah. before it turned into a tag match, but... I'm super excited for Sunday's Fatal 4-Way. I have really high expectations for these guys, and I really think that the beneficiary of this is going to be Miz because I feel like the three talents that they're surrounding the Miz with are um, making him seem more legit in the fans' eyes. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and he's, he could be a part of a great match on Sunday even if he's not... You know, let's say the match is a 10, but he's a 7 as a worker. I'm just yeah. saying arbitrary numbers. Yeah. It's making him come off like a 10. It's, yeah. it's elevating him. So it's doing him some favors, in my opinion. Um, I've also been noticing it's a trend, and I'm not complaining. It's just an observation. Lots of superstars on commentary lately. Yeah. Um, not Again, not complaining. Uh, I, I just feel like it's been a while since we've seen it so often. Like, back in the 90s, it was kind of a thing. Then it kind of went away. But yeah, you're seeing more superstars on commentary lately. And it's just, like I said, more of an observation than a complaint or anything. Yeah. Um, a few more things I noted. Um, don't want to harp on this because I bring it up every week. The McMahon storyline still continues to infuriate me. Now the newest reason as to why it's upsetting me is... Okay, so yes, you, we have everything that I've complained about for the past several weeks about Shane versus Vince. Now, like, the one thing I was looking forward to when Shane and Stephanie both having control of the show was a little bit of tension yeah. between them, uh, some um, conflict between them. Why are they so buddy-buddy now? This is driving me crazy. Why is this happening? Um, I mentioned to a buddy that maybe they're trying to get Stephanie away from the heel role for a while. That could be, but this is just... I feel like it's at the expense of the audience. Yeah. And this has been the one angle, in really in history, that I've really felt offended by. Okay. That I really feel like they think we're so stupid that we're going to write it this way. And uh, I was excited for a little bit of tension between the two that we're not getting. My only thing is, I feel like maybe they could be building towards something. I believe they are. And they're starting with, like, they're so buddy-buddy. But I feel like they shouldn't be starting like that because they're supposed to hate each other, right? They're supposed to, but yeah. right now they're not. And um, like I said, my last my comment last night was maybe they're trying to get Stephanie away from the Hill role. But I think eventually they're going to build to that McMahon versus McMahon. Maybe at SummerSlam, so they have to 
hold off on the writing. I mean, I mean, maybe, but it's amazing that Shane is as over as he is because the writing that's surrounded him since his return has been the worst in company history, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm just so upset with the writing there. I'll move forward. Not going to harp on that one. Um, the Shining Stars debuted last night, yeah. or you could call it a re-debut. <laughs> Boy, was that unimpactful. Yeah. Um, I was more excited, literally, to see two unknown jobbers. Uh, I love jobbers and all the enhancement town glory. Um, than I was to see the Shining Stars. This will not last long, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, before I get into that, the jobbers. I think the jobbers need to come back to help put over Star Town. I I'm so happy to see them. I yeah. agree. Every week should not be um, name guy versus name guy. Like remember back in the day, like in the '90s and the '80s and stuff. Like it would be rare to see two guys you knew both of them. Squaring off, you know, or they save it for the main event of a primetime wrestling or whatever. And that would actually, I think, help creative. I mean, because that gives them a lull, and I don't have to make main event matches every week. Well, and it's more exciting to see um, Chris Jericho versus Dean Ambrose when you haven't seen it eight times on Raw. Yeah. Or AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns when they haven't fought eight times on Raw. So I agree. You're, you're not going to get any disagreement from me there that they could, maybe not as, obviously you can't bring it back as much as they were yeah. in the olden days, but once in a while, yeah. like let, let Ryback go through three guys at once. That, that, exactly. I'm cool with that, personally. But they, the Shining Stars specifically, who were meant to be the stars, yeah. did not come off as stars last no, night. I, it's like Epico did all the work. Tags in Primo. Primo does one thing. Tags out. Finisher. It's over. Yeah. Th this is a team that they've struggled with since they've had them. They're never going to be successful in the WWE. They need I, Carlito. Well, I don't even love <laughs> him, to be honest with you, but he was the star of the yeah. family. So uh, that was my thoughts about the Shining Stars, and that is a terrible name. That's yeah. not... That's a I very like the Puerto basic Ricans name. better than that. And yeah, how bland as that is. I, I I agree, and that's a terrible name. You're right, but it's still better than the, the shooting star, or the shining stars, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, the asylum match, um, it is what it is. It's it kind of feels like um, a '90s WCW gimmick, almost like a Chamber of Horrors thing. It's a little hokey to me, but I will say. Kudos for being a bit more creative than a normal cage match. Yeah. That's my thoughts here. What do you think about the Asylum um, match? Better choice of items hanging from the top. Really, a mop and bucket? <laughs> um, Gavin was saying last week that he doesn't like Dean Ambrose with props. I yeah. didn't necessarily agree with him, but this I'm sure would infuriate him. Um, also, on I don't know if you watched the episodes last week, but I was comparing Jericho uh, and this feud with Ambrose to... Mm -hmm a 90s retro Jericho angle, yeah. and I was using that as praise, yeah. I still kind of feel like this is having that quality. Like, if you think about it, it started ridiculous with Mitch the plant being broken, like yeah. Mitch the potted plant, and then it was the jacket, which was a little less ridiculous, but still ridiculous. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's kind of culminating with ridiculousness, with this mop and bucket at cage match. Um, so I'm actually kind of enjoying it in all of its retro glory. Uh, I don't have a problem with it right now, personally. I know Jericho's kind of phoning it in with his matches lately. Um, I'm not sure it's getting Ambrose over totally, but I'm having fun with it. Yeah, I'm, I was, again, talking to a friend last night, and I think the, Ambro, the watered-down Ambrose is what we're seeing right now because he can be so extreme, and he wants to do so much more, and he keeps being told no by you know, the powers that be. And I would um, just like to see him cut loose one time. Uh, yeah, and they had the opportunity at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, they were really sending us in that direction mentally, and that would have been a really good avenue, uh, outlet, opponent. Like It was all in place yeah. for that to happen, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, so this is the second week in a row that we've seen Bob Backlund on Raw with as a life coach for Darren Young. Yeah. Well, I will say I'm excited to see Bob Backlund... It, on TV again, the acting is incredibly stiff, uh, and I'm not positive it's going to work out, but I like seeing Bob. What do you think about Bob? Uh, I'm not a fan of Bob. Um, All right. I, I wasn't in the 90s when he came back then, and I'm not 20 years later that he come back now. Um, the stiff acting has always been like kind of his M.O., and I hate that he's dragging Darren Young down. Uh, I think Darren needs a new life Drag coach. Dragging him down, I can't agree with that. I, I can give you some other stuff, but... Uh, Darren Young has been off the radar completely. This is the only reason people are paying attention to him. So he's not going to be dragging Darren Young down at all. In well, my right opinion. now he's circling the drain. 
Okay, I'll, that much I can give you. At least this is something. This yeah. is a gimmick yeah. for him. Yeah, he's so. on TV. Um, you know, when Bob came back in the 90s, I mean, he wasn't like he was before, but that feud with Bret Hart, I was into. Like, I love that submission match at Survivor Series with Owen and Davey Boy in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he did some good stuff in the 90s, personally, but I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I won't pick this fight. Um, <laughs> then, So, you know, a few more things before we get to the main event. Um, the champion is not really seen in the main event very much anymore. No. Um, I'm curious as to, since it's been two weeks, have you, have you at all amended your thoughts on Roman Reigns? Where are you at with this? Because I feel like this is the most epic of championship failures. This is someone, and I mentioned this last week with Gavin, uh, putting the Usos with Roman Reigns, in my opinion, is proving to be a mistake. Um, they are not making Roman Reigns look any less boring. Uh, he's, he's coming off so incredibly boring to me, and even more so now with his cousins here. I want to know where you're at with this, and if, you're, and if you still stand firm, by all means, stay where you're at. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm standing firm. Um, I don't necessarily agree that... I know why they're together because of the bloodline. Mm-hmm. So I mean, those are you know that's his group to back him. So I understand that. Last night I actually thought he had one of the better promos he's had since WrestleMania. Roman um, Reigns. Yeah, I don't um, even remember it. I'm um, talking to AJ before you know the club comes out and the Usos are behind him. They had a they had a decent exchange that you know Wait, made if, me intrigued. If, if you consider that one of his better promos, that's why he's not a good champion, in my opinion. That was just to me, it was forgettable. It was basic. No. Um, when Gavin was here, I mentioned on last week's Raw, they there was a short interview segment in a locker room that had Roman Reigns and the Usos. All three of them talked shortly. And um, in my opinion, when I was watching that, I was thinking, oh my God, either one of these Usos would make a better champion right now than Roman Reigns, in my opinion. They're both more charismatic, have more personality and more life in them than the champion does. Uh, I'm so against this. I feel like this is one of the most disastrous title runs in recent history. Well, I don't feel like that. Um, I'm a fan of Roman Reigns because of what he does and what he can do, not because of what he says. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. And then, um, you know, I thought the show closed on a funny note. Yes. All right, go ahead. What do you? What do you? Where are your thoughts on this? Um, I was, I'm happy to see the women get the time. I mean, yes. They, I mean, they need to be there, but when they're there, they have to do something with it. It was flat. Yeah, I was talking with one. Of, and flat is the, actually the word that I wrote down about this. Um, I was talking to one of my friends about this. One of my friends, Jerry. Um, we were both happy to see. Um, that they're kind of shaking up how the show ends, and yeah. they're they're exposing different parts of the roster at the end of the show. Yes. And I don't want to come down on that because I think that's a great move. That is. But we need to make sure that the main event segment is worthy of it, and flat is the word. Um, the women's feud is is going okay, but it, it, it was a weird way to end the show. Um, we needed a bigger bang at the end. Yeah, Natty, Natty is coming off as very fake to me in her posture and her words. Um, if if I was Rob, I would say Natty is the female Roman Reigns. Because okay. Because she's just, she's not getting anything out of me. And I'm not a Charlotte fan, so Charlotte needs somebody that's going to elevate that situation. And, and when they get that time, they have to take, they have to impact it and make well, it worthwhile. I do think Rick was doing a lot of the work for the girls, which, which is fine or whatever, but it was not the right note to go out on, especially yeah. on a last Raw before a pay-per-view, yeah. in my opinion. I'm cool with not seeing the main eventers in the main event spot. Like, I actually think that's kind of a trait of the new era. Yes. Um, but let's make sure we end with a bang. Yes. You know? So, um, in fact, usually, Steve, you control that here on this show. Do you have anything else you want to add before I close it? Uh, no, we can end it as flat as we did Raw last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we go ahead and end it with, uh, with a bang. For myself, the Rob, my tag team partner, Steve. It doesn't matter what your name is. 